In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this dynamic top 10 list where you will be able to select the number of athletes that you would like to display, as well as whether you would like the data to be displayed low to high or high to low. This is going to be a really powerful trick for any of your athlete projects where you need to display the top number of athletes for a given metric. So let's get after it. Okay, so in order to get started, we have started with a blank page here. And what we're going to do is create that dynamic top 10 list that I showed you in the intro video, just so that you can understand what we're starting with. Um, I have a sheet here with some data on it, which we have our athlete name, date, and then we'll pick one of the three metrics to create our top 10 list off of today. And then we will put it all on a blank sheet here. Just a quick reminder that if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on the bell notification so that when I post a new video, you will get notified when that gets released. Okay, so let's get after this now. The first thing I'm gonna wanna do is I'm going to create my header titles here. And I know that I'm going to create one for the rank of the athlete, the athlete name, the date of the test, and then we'll do bench max. So I'm gonna put those in the middle there. I'm just going to center these and I'll give them um, sort of a darker color and then I'll just make the text black. And that just signifies to me that we have headers. Now, in order to create any kind of top 10 list, there's a nifty little function built into Google Sheets called sort n. So we're gonna use that function right now. So I'll, I'm gonna go under the athlete name box and I'll go up to my formula bar and I'm gonna type equals sort n. And then when I open this up, it's going to ask me first, what is the range that I actually want to sort? So in this case, I'm going to go to my data sheet and I am going to sort from, from A2 all the way over to C. So we're going to basically sort this whole range here. So we'll take the athlete name, the date, and the bench max. And then when I hit comma, we'll go back to our video and it's going to ask us for N. And what the N represents is how many values we want to return. And in this case, I'm going to return 10. And then I'm gonna hit comma again. It's going to ask me the display ties mode. For this, I'm going to type false. My sort column, if I go back to my data sheet, what I want to sort by is the bench uh, max. So I'm gonna go data C2 all the way to C, and then comma is ascending, and we're gonna do false because we want a descending order. We want the highest at the top. And when I close this off, right away, we're gonna already have our sorted list. So if we wanted to modify this formula, I could go to N and I could type 15 in here and it would automatically give me 15 athletes um, and so on. So what I'm going to do now is actually create some boxes in here where we can change the number of athletes that we've selected. Underneath D, what I'll do is I'm going to create um, a dropdown list that has some different options in it. So we'll go to data, down to data validation, and I want to create a list of items. So what I'm gonna do is, it's gonna ask me for the numbers and then separate it by a comma. So I'll go five, comma, 10, comma, 15, comma, 20, comma, 25, and hit save. And now I should be able to select five, 10, 15, or 25. I'm just going to color this a different color so I remember where it is. So let's select five. And then if I go back to my formula, underneath the sort n where we had that 10, if I delete that, and I'm actually going to select now D1 where we're selecting that number. If I hit enter, it's going to give me a list of five. Now if I go to 10, you can see that it automatically grows or changes based on the amount of athletes that we choose. So then the next piece is we want to be able to change this from ascending or descending. So what I'll do here is I'm gonna insert a checkbox and the value for a checkbox, when this is unchecked, it means false. And when I check it, it's going to mean true. So we can stick this right into our sort n function. If we go back to our function and when we get to the end here and it says is ascending, if we take that false out and we actually use this checkbox cell and hit enter again, you can see now what happens is, is when I check it, we get an ascending order. And when I uncheck it, we get a descending order. And this will be really useful for when we want to um, change different metrics later on. In a future video, I'll show you how to make the metric dynamic. But say we're looking at something like sprint times, we actually want the smallest one at the top, okay? 
So then the next piece is we'll just type in low to high and I'll just left justify that so it matches with our checkbox there and I will just give that a color. And then the last piece now is I actually want numbers to appear down the side here based on if the athlete is in first, second, third place, etc. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just put all 25 in there and we're gonna create a formula that basically looks to see if anything's in this cell and if it does, it returns the rank of that athlete. So what this is gonna look like is I'll go up to my formula bar and I'm gonna do an array formula because I wanna type this formula in once and have it go all the way down. So I'm gonna type equals array formula and I'm gonna open this up and the formula that I can use here is actually a formula called rank. And what rank does is it will assign a number of one to however many values you have based on the position of that value in your data set. So for example, if we have high to low, if we use rank, the highest value will be one, second highest will be two, and so on and so forth. So array formula rank, open this up, and it's going to ask me for a value. And in this case, the value is going to be F3, but because it's an array, we're gonna take it all the way down to F27. So those are gonna be my values. My data is going to be the exact same, F3 to F27. And then when we actually choose whether we want it ascending or descending, it follows the same parameters. So if I just use this checkbox cell, and I'm gonna lock that in with F4, if I use that and close this all off, what you're gonna notice is now it's automatically added in all of my ranks, okay? So if we delete some of these, you can see that it just takes away and it'll only go up to 15. Now the last thing we wanna do is just clean up these extra formulas here if we do not have um, those values. So the way to do that is we'll just take this whole array formula, wrap it in an if error, and then at the end, I'll type comma, and then double quotations which signifies I want it to show nothing if there's an error and when I hit enter that goes away. And how does this work? If we change it to um, ascending, you can see now my lowest value is rank one and so on and so forth. The only thing to note about the rank function is in this case we have two values that are tied for um, number three. So it's just gonna show that as a one, two, three, three and then go right on to five. So that's what it'll how it'll um, handle values that are the same. So this was just a quick trick to show you how to make a top 10 list for your data. And this could be a really powerful tool if you're collecting any sort of metrics and you wanna see um, your athletes in order based on the metric that you're collecting. And in the next video, what we'll do is we'll make this even further dynamic and we'll actually be able to choose our metric and then have this display that metric. So where it says benchmarks, we'll actually be able to choose what metric we wanna look at so we can have one top 10 list or top end list, I guess, that will handle all of the metrics that we want. So thank you for watching, and if you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel, and if you could share it with someone, that would be great, and I will see you in the next video.